Breathalyzers are the go-to tool for law enforcement agencies across the country when it comes to catching impaired drivers. But there are mounting cases that show the devices may be unreliable when it comes to people with certain medical conditions. Joining me with more is partner at criminal defense firm Averagil Goldstein and Partners, Michael Spratt. Michael, thank you for being here today. Oh, no problem, Ben. Thanks for inviting me on. So there have been cases of people who've been diagnosed with conditions like severe asthma, COPD, or Bell's palsy. Now, they struggle to provide breath samples when ordered to by police. You say this is something you've seen in your line of work. So tell me about the cases you've dealt with and what's happened to the people involved when they couldn't provide sufficient breath samples. Yeah, so on the roadside, when a police officer pulls you over, um, they can demand that you provide a sample of breath into, into a roadside breath machine. And you need to have a sufficient seal. It's like drinking through a straw so that you can blow into the machine. And you need to produce enough volume of breath to actually trigger the machine. That means that if you have breathing difficulties, if you have any medical conditions that can interfere with your ability to form a seal or to, to blow large amounts of air, air you might uh, not uh, register on the machine. And, and that can lead to a criminal charge. So I've had clients who um, have breathing difficulties, have only had one lung, clients who have had um, different cancers and haven't been able to form the seal. And so what this means is that even though they're not impaired, even though they want to cooperate with the police, uh, they end up being charged criminally for refusing to comply with this breath demand. Well, the, the, the potential for miscarriages of justice is huge because there's nearly two and a half million Canadians living with asthma, about two million more with COPD. What protections does the law provide to people with medical conditions that prevent them from providing a proper breast sample? Well, there isn't really any protections except going to trial. And so this means that if you have one of these conditions and you can't provide a breath sample, there's no alternative. You don't have the right to say to the police officer, um, you know, take me back to the police station, I'll voluntarily give you some of my blood even. Or can you perform some other sobriety tests as an alternative? You don't have that ability to make those demands when you're a charged person. So your only recourse is to go to trial. And then the burden almost shifts to the accused person to show that, you know, that there was a legitimate reason for why they can't provide a sample. And it's getting worse because it used to be that the police needed to have some reason to suspect that you had been consuming alcohol before they could demand these tests. Under the new law that was just recently passed by the federal government, the police don't need any suspicions. They can demand a test at any time for any reason. And that means that we're gonna see more people like this who have consumed no alcohol, who have done nothing wrong, uh, come away from these interactions with criminal charges. But, so if you had the ability to tweak that law that you were just discussing, talking about that was passed in December, if you had the ability to go to Ottawa and, and fix that law, what would be the changes that you would like to see to protect these kinds of people that we've been describing? Well, one of the things that, that we've been asking for for a number of years is to change the charging regime. Right now, if you can't or if you refuse to provide a sample on the side of the road, it's an automatic charge. We'd like to see that, that refusal or that inability be grounds for further tests. Perhaps you have been drinking and you're belligerent, but, but the refusal just means that you get taken back to the station and it provides the police grounds to, to do further tests. Or in these tragic cases where people have physical conditions that, that prevent them from, from providing a sample, that the ability or the inability to provide a sample actually just gives the police grounds to look at other ways of detecting impairment, like blood tests or like coordination tests. That will divert people away from court who are innocent and who haven't done anything wrong. It will recognize the reality of the medical conditions that people have. And it will also make sure that we have the most accurate and reliable evidence to prosecute those who actually are committing criminal offenses. Michael Spratt, we're gonna have to leave it there, but thanks so much uh, for everything today. Thank you very much. No problem, anytime.